Once again, we are fortunate here to have Mike Trish, who is the Deputy Director at UCLA. He's here today to talk about all the wonderful questions to find all the wonderful students out there known as the Personal Insights. Welcome to the show, Mike. Happy to be back. So right now you're in the middle of the season reading and stuff like that. So how is it coming along? Like, How do you get energized to deal with all those essays, both wonderful and some like... Oh, I guess they missed the marker there. You know, what's really nice about it is even after reviewing applications and essays and personal insight questions for many years, the fact that so many students write actually engaging, insightful answers, it's a part of the application that is much more rewarding in some cases than the other boxes or lists of grades and courses. So that's always a part that we look forward to. And even with the the volume we face at UCLA, um, it still is very rewarding. And being up here um, in San Francisco for different points in time throughout reading season helped break that monotony as That's, well. I bet. And UCLA has the record of over 100,000 mm. applications. Yes. Sadly, we yeah. are the most applied to university yet again in the U.S. and in the U.C., um, but we couldn't do it without all of our, our readers who are both UCLA staff um, faculty, admission staff, and then a lot of outside readers that are college counselors and high school guidance counselors that help us out with well, that. And one of the great things is that students are hearing that you appreciate it, because I know on the other end, when students are working on it, it's like, will they will they really read it? Will they really see it, right? So there's a lot of emotions involved with a lot of work in a short period of time. <clears throat> yes, and we absolutely read all of them. It's one of the most, one of the most important parts of the application is those narrative responses and the answers about activities and involvement and work experience. Mm -hmm. So you can rest assured that we are reading all of those and in many cases using those sections to make final decisions. Yeah. And so hopefully we could bust some myths that are out there, right? So a lot of times students will assume that UC is primarily focused on for admissions UC GPA, so 10th and 11th, those A to G, especially for those California residents, and just test scores. But UC readers, like you mentioned, spend a lot of time on what the University of California calls personal insights, which I personally like as well. (laughs) And uh, can you tell our listeners what are the personal insights? Sure. And you're absolutely right. I think one of the, in regards to what we have, we currently use for admission, what we used to use, the UCs used to be much more reliant on GPA and test scores. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of parents and people who went to the UC a number of years ago would be familiar with. But the process, as everyone knows, has changed. Um, The number of applications has changed. And that's why we rely on more factors of admission, which include the personal insight questions. And those essentially are eight questions that allow a student the opportunity to express themselves, share insight and perspective on who they are, what they've been doing, um, what has mattered to them. And that's critically important when we're thinking about building a class of scholars and student members of a community at any of the UC campuses. Right. And so if a student goes to universityofcalifornia.edu for slash admissions and click on how to apply and then personal insight questions, they'll discover eight prompts, right? <clears throat> Focusing on either students' leadership, creative side, a great talent they have, educational opportunities or barriers, a challenge they overcame, an academic subject they love, how they improve their community, or something else that will help you guys for that student to stand out. So these topics are great. They're diverse. But sometimes it's hard for students because out of those eight, they can only select four. So how would you recommend a student select those four? Yeah, the best way to approach it is as as you're reading those topics off and as students look at the website, I think that automatically they should go with what they want to avoid <clears throat> because there are topics there that if I was applying for college, I would never answer the question. Yeah, me too. And so I think lean into that and say, okay, I, I know that I'm not probably interested in those answers. But at the same time, when you're reading some of those or as students are looking at them, there'll be other topics that they're already starting to answer. Their mind is starting to wander on how they could answer it. Lean into that and actually start to formulate those answers, outline them, and see how it allows you as a student to share your story, your path, your journey, insight about you. And odds are there probably are at least three to four there where a student should feel comfortable doing that. Right. And that's that's ultimately our goal. There's not one question that everyone answers. There's not one that everyone avoids. Um, we wrote all eight. We love all eight. So right. there's not one that a student needs to answer to be 
admissible to the UC. Yeah, and these are questions you guys seem to be going to keep for a while, right? Because they've done the job. And I've seen it on the mm-hmm. other side. Like, a lot of people are like, well, how did this kid get in? And it's like, because you gave them a time to shine that also reflected other areas for them to shine as well, too. Exactly. We're very happy with the questions. Mm-hmm. I foresee very little change. Uh, anytime all nine undergraduate campuses can agree on something. Yeah, I know. It's a miracle. <laughs> you yeah. really don't want to change that. Yeah. And so things are working well. It's given us that additional insight and perspective that we were really looking for and has allowed students to share more about themselves, which in a selective admission process is critically important. Okay, great. And so, and and great point too. So UC Merced, UC Santa Cruz, UC Berkeley, UCLA, and all the others will use the exact same personal insight questions Mm -hmm. and review them as well. Yes, it's like the common application in the sense of your answers to any of those four questions will go to each of the campuses you apply to. So they should not be campus specific. They shouldn't reference a, a particular campus. but And really they shouldn't because they're about you, the student, mm-hmm. not your um, affinity for UC or for a certain campus. So it should be about you, your story, and that should resonate with any of the campuses you apply yeah, to. Yeah, And I think the important thing you mentioned is your story, not something that someone else helps you to design. Just take it from the heart. You know. <clears throat> That's exactly right. And it shouldn't be someone else's story in the sense of too often students may talk about that person who's really influenced them or that family member or that sibling who Mm -hmm. inspired them. And that's a perfectly fine thing to briefly address, but then the attention should quickly turn back to you, me, kind of how it influenced me, how that person impacts me, where I am now, where I was in the past. That's the story, not so much about the other individual. And you guys read so many that you know when it's the student's voice, when it's authentic. A lot of kids like, oh, no, no, I have a special editor or essay writer. And I'm like, oh, red flag, mm-hmm. red flag. They want to just hear you. This is not a Shakespearean script that you have to write. Yeah, <clears throat> this, you know, we, like you said, after years of reading these, and many of our readers at UCLA have been reviewing applications for 10 to 15 years, mm-hmm. you just know what a 17 year old sounds like. And if it sounds like it was written by a 45 year old lawyer, yeah. then we know that sometimes, in best of intentions, an adult has edited it so much or they're trying to help you that your voice is lost. And one of the best things you as a student can do to empower yourselves is if someone wants to edit it, let them give you verbal feedback. Don't let them actually take a pen or track changes in a Word doc, but they should give you verbal feedback and then you go and take and implement that in your own way. Yeah, no, that's great advice. I remember one example a student showed me and I knew the students like, oh, I am a seed. And the sun is my world. And they never spoke this way. Never the previous. Right? I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not you. Yeah. yeah. So don't do it. That's not <laughs> what we're looking for in this. It's more content. Right. As opposed to kind of your life philosophy. Right. It's examples, um, a bit of you know who you are, what you've experienced, and how it's impacted you. Less theory or philosophy. Right. And currently, the policy for someone applying to UC, you have to have that 3.0 UC GPA. And sometimes when the student applies to a school like UCLA or other competitive campuses, they're like, a UC reader is not going to read my, my story. So can you kind of answer that question? Will a UC reader actually read it? Yeah, so the, the GPA is a minimum for eligibility that is set by the entire system. But many of the campuses will review every application that's submitted, even if the, the student's GP, UC GPA falls below that, that eligibility requirement. And UCLA is one of those campuses where no matter what the GPA, no matter what the test score or anything else in the application Every application submitted will be reviewed at least twice. And so those students will have the opportunity for their voice to be heard through the personal insight question answers and anything else they choose to share in the additional comments or through the activities or involvement so that we fully understand the context of why maybe those grades or that test score isn't as high as other applicants. Um, And it still is a smaller number of students who gain admission that may be below that threshold. So it's not as though that's the majority of our admitted class, but it still is an opportunity for students to truly share what would have impacted their academic performance. Yeah, and the beauty about UC is you're looking for someone who's going to be successful at each of your campuses, but also be a contributor. And that is defined in many different ways, not just the GPA or test scores. Exactly. And 
Many of our campuses, they're active, engaging places, and so we need to know that students through high school have taken advantage of opportunities, have kind of pushed themselves, are are out there getting involved and active, but also have the maturity to discuss anything that's impacted them along the way, because the more we see that demonstration of maturity, we know a student is ready to thrive at a place of 30,000 students like any of the UC campuses. Right. I, I, I love that you pointed that out because so many students like, okay, I'll do X, Y, and Z. It's like, no, no, no. What are you passionate about and how have you broke on, off beyond that box? Yes. You know, that mm-hmm. level and made a difference or impact. Exactly. Right. And, so, yep. and then that, even if you don't get into a wonderful school, you made an impact in your own life, in your community, and that's the best reward. There yeah, is. I mean, that's the nice thing is there are nine UC campuses, all undergraduate focused. All nine provide different settings and opportunities for students. And so there could be something that you put in your personal insight question that really resonates with some of the campuses, but for others, it just might not be that great fit. Um, And ultimately, our goal is to ensure that you are thriving on our campuses. And it might be a certain type of student who thrives at UCLA or doesn't and is better fit for a Riverside or a Santa Cruz. And the campuses are reviewing with that in mind. And that's the beauty of a human being actually processing your application. But Mm -hmm. also there's that subjective point of view. And you have to just trust that process and trust in yourself. Exactly. Everyone ends up somewhere. Yes. And so as long as you have your list of colleges, you don't have a favorite or you don't have that dream you see, I would say you have options at the UC. That's the best way to start the conversation with family, friends, your college counselor, your community-based, you know, organization advisor, whoever it is, because if you frame it that way, your family, your friends will frame it that way, and then ultimately you'll be able to celebrate gaining admission, but you won't have to be focused on, well, I didn't get into this place, because nothing's worse than a statement, well, I didn't get in here, but I got in here. It should be, I got in here. That's right. And that's it. That's right. I tell students I can't stand, okay, maybe it's a little bit strong, but I don't like, (laughs) right, you know, the comment of this is my first choice. And it's like, well, this is kind of, you're being the suitor, right? And not everyone's going to say yes to you immediately from the dance floor. This is not the bachelor's part where you're only looking at one mate, right? You want to look at a variety of different options. And that's the beauty of the UCs. I think they personally design, find different locations of programs that offer variety. Not every school offers business administration. Not every school offers School of Agriculture. Everyone offers what makes them great. So, yes. so make sure you have that challenge, that possible likely school, because it is competitive, but there's a place for everybody, too. Agreed. I think getting away from language of first choice, second choice, or things like that, but these, this is the group of schools that I've applied to, and we'll see what happens. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So we do have some students who do apply to some competitive programs. So if a student's applying to one campus that has an impacted major, and let's just say engineering, which is very, <laughs> and then another campus as undecided, since it's one application, right, they could literally just check off the box and put a variety of majors on there, which all That's the UCs correct. will see, correct? We see it for our campus. For your campus, so but you, you won't see it for the other campus. Exactly. So if you were to apply to, say, two campuses, You choose the campus, and then based on the campus you choose, you then are offered the options for majors, either undecided or actually choosing a major within a school or college. If, say, a student applied to UC Irvine and UCLA, we would only at UCLA see what the student applied to for UCLA. And the same would be true for the admissions staff at Irvine. They wouldn't know the alternative. And so if a student chose to apply undecided, for example, like UC Irvine, and but engineering at UCLA, and one it felt really compelled to talk about their love of engineering. How would that play out for that student, you know, and or how would you advise that student if they are want to write about it, but one school is undecided and one is going to be engineered since all of them are going to look at the exact same prompts? <clears throat> so the way I would say that plays out is we don't specifically ask a student to talk about their intended mm-hmm. field of study. And that's intentional. It's not an oversight. It's not something we're we're kind of being coy about. Right. We don't want a student to talk about their intended field of study. Yeah. Our, our goal in undergraduate admission at any of the UCs is to ensure that a student is prepared to thrive both in the academic and social setting of the UC that they've applied to. Right. And so a student... A, Really, whether or not they've applied to engineering or the College of Letters and Science or whatever it may be, um, we have enough information through the UC application without 
a specific question about the field of study to know whether or not they will be successful if we admit them to that field of study. There are a few exceptions.